Doom is a game that is part of gaming history. During its time, it was revolutionary in the first-person shooter genre. There have been many video games within the Doom franchise ever since the first game in 1993. It even expanded to a comic book and a few novels, which were a different take on the franchise's story. But we also have two Doom movies, one that came out in 2005 and another in 2019. The 2019 movie, Doom Annihilation, was supposed to be more closer to the Doom games in some way, having a lot of references to Doom-related material, but not really being the Doom movie we wanted. This video is going to look at all the Doom references I noticed during this movie. Considering the film's budget was set to around $4 million and it was rushed through production, they didn't really have enough time or funding to make a proper Doom movie so you can see why it went straight to a video release. When the first trailer was released, it was not well received, and fans were left worrying if there was anything good to see later on. Even though the film is based on the video game entitled Doom by id Software, the official Doom account did reply on Twitter by saying that they were not involved with the movie. The idea for the movie was originally pitched back in 2015, but they couldn't get much support at the time because the previous Doom film didn't do so well. After the release and positive feedback from the video game Doom 2016, the director, Tony Giglio, pitched a more detailed story again, and the studio was then going to consider doing a screenplay. This might just be a unique or rare description of the story, but the page on IMDb mentions the words Hell on Earth. It kind of reminds me of the title of Doom 2, Hell on Earth. I couldn't find any other website with this description that is worded in this way, so maybe it's just this website's version of it. You can also see Hell on Earth when selecting an episode in Doom 2. The first thing I noticed is the opening of the film credits, Amy Mason, who plays Joan. This seems like a typo or an error, because the end credits show her name is Amy Manson. The UAC is titled as the United Aerospace Corporation in this movie, but in the original game it was the Union Aerospace Corporation. While keycards are a common thing in certain facilities, the ones you see in this movie are colored, just like in the original game, where you have keycards that are red, blue, and yellow. You'll notice a character named Dr. Malcolm Betruger, which is taken from the Doom 3 video game. The name Betruger translates to something like Betrayer or Cheater, which fits into the motives of both characters. The plot of the movie is around using teleporters to transport people from Earth to the Phobos moon, but the scientists call them gates. These are ancient devices that were found with Sumerian text all over them. Teleporters were also used in the Doom game from 1993, but they were only used for short-range travel within a level. When we meet the crew aboard the Nola transport vessel, the main character is Joan Dark, which was inspired by a famous warrior character, Joan of Arc. The director went to Catholic school for 12 years, so this is how that character's name was chosen for the film. A female lead was selected because of how effective Linda Hamilton was in Terminator and Sigourney Weaver from the Alien movies. In the Doom game, our hero had a pet rabbit named Daisy. This movie has two references about this rabbit. The first is the keychain owned by the ship's pilot. It has a rabbit's foot on it. And the second one is the AI system on the ship, is named Daisy, who is voiced by Gina Phillips. We see one member playing a VR game for a few seconds. It's not linked to Doom really, but if you want to know, the game is Space Pirate Trainer. One member of the team is named Private Lee Chen. It seems like this could have been taken from a character that was planned for original Doom before it was changed. This one was called Lore Lei Chen. While it's not a direct copy, it could just be another variation of it. Before the Doom game was released in 1993, it underwent huge changes to the original story written by Tom Hall, along with gameplay elements that never made it into the final version of the game. If you want to see all the details about that, I will leave a link to that video. Tom Hall served as a creative director in the video game Rise of the Triad Dark War. There's a character named Lorelei Ni, which could be another variation of Lorelei Chen. 
when we get a mission briefing about Phobos, we meet Captain Savage. You could say he kind of looks like Doom Guy, but some people might see it while others don't. What do you think? Around the time the team is suiting up and equipping their weapons, Captain Savage is seen holding a double-barreled shotgun. In the original Doom game, the manual says it was known as a combat shotgun, which are double-barreled, but most of us know it as the super shotgun. When the team talks about possibly encountering aliens on the Phobos base, if this does occur, one person says, I'm their ultra nightmare. While it's not directly related to Doom of 1993, the last two difficulty settings in that game were Ultra Violence and Nightmare. It seems like this was taken from Doom 2016's highest difficulty, which is Ultra Nightmare. These words are spoken a second time by another team member later on in the film. When everyone enters the Phobos base, they activate their heads-up display on their helmets. It comes equipped with a map which outlines hallways and dead ends, kind of like the mapping system in Doom. The first fallen UAC soldier they locate is someone named William J. Blaskowicz. This is a nod towards the character that is mentioned in the Wolfenstein games. They would then locate a dead scientist named John Carmack. The last name is also used in the 2005 movie for a missing scientist. John Carmack is taken from one of the co-creators of the original Doom game. The character named Sandy Peterson has a very short time in the film. She appears in the beginning of the film during the testing phase of the gate and is later found along other survivors but is killed by a zombie. The name Sandy Peterson is a reference to one of the members of the original Doom game. When Joan and Winslow get attacked by a few more zombies, Winslow ends up saying, I'm too young to die. Then he runs off, leaving Joan alone to defend herself. The words, I'm too young to die, is from the Doom game's lowest difficulty setting. Joan would then shoot a nearby barrel, making it explode to use against a zombie. This could be a nod to what you could do in the original Doom game. As she's fighting off the incoming zombies, she grabs a chainsaw nearby and defeats three zombies with it. The chainsaw was a weapon you could use in Doom. The focus of the story is to locate another planet to colonize in the future. They did find other planets, but they had no way to reach them. Sometime later, they found two gates, one on Phobos and one on Earth. Bases were built around them, but they had a theory that there could be more around the universe. The gates are around seven and a half thousand years old, made up of a chemical compound they are unaware of. These gates predate the pyramids and only work when hooked up to technology, but they also open a gate which is connected to hell and then demons came through. We also get to see imps throwing fireballs. The projectiles form around the chest area then they throw it with both hands. The animation is kind of what you see in Doom 64. The BFG weapon makes an appearance that fires a green plasma shot. The first time it's used, it has no blast radius, but the second time it's used is in hell, and it's shown to properly dispose of demons that are close to the blast radius, similar to how it functions in the original Doom game. I might as well talk about hell since it's in the movie. It has that dark and barren design to it, with a source of light in the sky. A very big change from what was in Doom 3 where it focused more on reddish colors and skulls mounted on walls or above doorways with some lava in the area. Maybe it's just me, but I think it shares some aesthetic look for early designs of Hell from Doom 2016. The Hell demon that shows up can form its body from this black liquid. It seems to have no legs, and its arms don't seem like they are made for combat. Kind of like the old version of the Icon of Sin, where the commander of Hell's army is just a stationary target. The lesser demons in this scene seem to have the body structure similar to the imps from Doom 2016. They look to be shorter in height, with thin bodies and limbs, but can run faster. Perhaps they took inspiration from that game. It's a different demon from what attacked the humans on Phobos. You can see their body mass skin design, and head shape is not the same. The final scene in Hell looks to replicate the art box of the original Doom game, where the hero is surrounded by demons. There were no larger demons in the movie, only minor ones, aside from the demon lord in Hell. 
But back in 2018, the director did say he was hoping to include the Barons of Hell in a possible sequel. Then, in 2022, he mentioned that a new script is completed, but production was delayed due to the world issue that went on for two years, and he's still hoping to find a slot soon. And that wraps up this video with all the Easter eggs or Doom-related references that I could find in the movie Doom Annihilation. If I missed anything, please tell me in the comments section. To see more videos like this, just subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, this is Carlos, and I'll see you on the next video.